the damn video away a free t-shirt, bring you a comic hero thrown out showdown fight, bring you comics news, and reveal the books I bought this week. How y'all doing? I'm Victor, and you are watching a comic hero show. Now kick that intro! this we we're here we made it it's a brand new year 2022 now this is um, a new year comic hero tea and of course you have the um 2022 now instead of a zero i have my logo and then here on the sleeves i have the roman numerals for the year 2022 which is mmxxii and i decided to be a little creative with it i used a um a random i mean a ransom note font and then um I want y'all to see this. This is also the um, the main my main logo with with the um, with the numbers 20, 22 or three twos. Now um, I've said this on past episodes of the show. I mean, on past episodes of, of, of the show, the first episode of the new year, rather. Um, instead of making New Year's resolutions, we should come into each year with New Year's revelations. In other words, if there's something that you didn't do in the previous year that you felt guilty about, then don't feel guilty about it. Get it done this year. And, um, oh, and by the way, if you would like your very own um, New Year's Comic Hero tee, you can find them on my website, IamTheComicHero.com for $20. All right, it's time to get away a free t-shirt. All right, on the last episode, I asked, what year did Luke Cage debut in comics? Well, the correct answer is 1972. And 11 people have answered correctly, and because they've answered correctly, the name's been entered in a drawing for a free tee. And that drawing takes place right now. So the winner of the free team for this week's episode of the show is... Anonymous Gamer. Now this is someone who answered right here on YouTube. So congratulations, Anonymous Gamer. Win yourself a free comic hero team. All right, here's the question for next week's episode. And this is a Suicide Squad question and it's very easy. Who played the role of the thinker in the Suicide Squad. Now I'm only gonna give one hint, and it's a very easy hint if you're a Whovian, or, oh, for those of y'all who don't know who, what a Whovian is, it's a fan of the uh, of the TV show Doctor Who. This actor is famous for playing the 12th Doctor on Doctor Who. That's the only hint I'm giving. And most of y'all um, who watch Doctor Who already know who this is, and you, and you all love this actor. I do too. Everyone who answers correctly will be entered in a drawing for a free tea on next week's episode of the show. All right, now Brad Fowler from Lindale, Texas has requested a comic hero turn on shutout fight, and this one features an Amazon princess going up against a human who also doubles as an Asgardian. Represent DC, we have Wonder Woman. And represent Marvel, we have the Jane Foster Valkyrie. These two are going to duke it out in a segment I like to call... The Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown. Welcome to the Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown. Today, it's Wonder Woman versus Valkyrie. Wonder Woman possesses superhuman strength, speed, reflexes, stamina and durability, regeneration, flight, immortality, empathy, 
extended longevity, is a master hand-to-hand -hand combatant and martial artist, multilingualism, is a master tactician and strategist, uses the lasso of truth, indestructible bracelets, projectile tiara, sword, shield, and invisible jet, divine empowerment, indomitable will, dimensional transportation, electrokinesis, enhanced senses which includes vision, smell, and hearing, and enhanced intellect. Valkyrie possesses access to Andre Yarn, the shape-shifting weapon, and flight. Who will win? Valkyrie knows she doesn't stand much of a chance, so she's desperate throughout this fight. Wonder Woman, on the other hand, is confident, but cautious. Valkyrie will frantically strike at Wonder Woman for minutes on end with Andre Yarn, but the latter will block every blow with her bracelets. Becoming frustrated with not being given the opportunity to generate any offense, Wonder Woman clashes her bracelets together and creates a burst of thunder that knocks Valkyrie to the ground and jarring Undryarn loose from her grasp. She then rows Valkyrie with her last of truth and ends the fight by yanking Valkyrie towards her and knocking her out cold. Wonder Woman wins. And that concludes this fight on the Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown! enjoyed that request from Brant Fowler and Brant thank you so much for it um, if y'all have any requests y'all want to make go ahead and do so now y'all know my rules it, it, um, at least you have to have at least one comic book character or manga character involved and they and they can either go up against another comic book or manga character a video game character or a science fiction cartoon character and it and um, also last rule no real life person must be used in, in these fights. All right, now it's time for Comically Speaking. So without further ado, let's talk comics. All right, now I originally said that I was gonna, uh, um, I said on, on the last episode that I was gonna go out and see Spider-Man No Way Home, but I reconsidered, and the reason I, I reconsidered is because uh, of this um, Omicron variant of COVID. I mean, so many folks have have been infected by by this strain, and I mean, I one thing about me: whenever I go somewhere, I wear a mask. You know, I practice I practice social distancing, and when I go somewhere, I'm not there very long. Um, and honestly, I don't feel safe enough to, to uh, sit in a movie theater for nearly two hours. Um, so, I've decided that I'm going to wait a little while longer until I go see Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, however, I did um, watch a Marvel Studios movie that, that um, at first I kind of slept on, but then I decided, okay, I'm going to watch this. And, I, and, I, and let me tell you, after watching it, I was not disappointed, which, which is my first topic. I uh, rented on Redbox Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings and let me tell you, that movie was amazing! Now, they kept it real and what I mean by that is that half the movie was in Mandarin and then half the movie was in English. Um, really loved the way this movie was written. I loved the way it was directed. I loved the cast, the crew, whoever composed the music. I mean, everything was great. Although there was one thing that that I was completely blindsided by, but I should have I should have seen it at the beginning. Um, Sir Ben Kingsley reprised his role in uh, from Iron Man three in this movie. Now he masqueraded as the terrorist known as the Mandarin. When in, when in uh, all actuality, he was just some washed up actor that was trying to in, inflict fear uh, in, in everyone throughout the world. And Iron Man pretty much told him, hey, knock it off. And then he ended up going to prison for, um, for, for um, all his crimes. Well, he ends up not in prison and he, um, he aids Shang-Chi. And he, he was a little more relevant in this movie. Not very much, but he was. And, uh, but one thing, but I love seeing me lose, um, role as the lead character, and I definitely love Aquafina's role as his girlfriend, Katie. 
Oh man, that is such a great movie. And also, Tim Roth uh, made a uh, who, who reprised his role as the Abomination made a very brief but very awesome uh, cameo in the movie. Of course, Tim Roth first played Emil Blonsky in the Abomination in the Incredible Hulk from 2008. Well, he was in it for probably about oh maybe five seconds, but it was still I mean it was still epic and. The, the cinematography in, in that was just spot on, and honestly, I kind of want to see that again. Heck, I may just buy it on DVD. I, I think Ring on Redbox what wasn't enough. That's one of those movies I wouldn't mind seeing again and again and again and so forth. Yeah, but if y'all slept on Shaman Chi and the Legend of Ten Rings, y'all better wake up. Go out, um, rent it on Redbox, uh, buy it on DVD, or, or even watch it on Disney Plus. Y'all will not be disappointed. All right, now my second topic, and this is um, one that I've been hoping for ever since word got out that Jonathan Hickman was gonna start um, helming all the X-Men books. Now, in the pages of X-Men, there, there are a group of mutants that call themselves the Five. Well, them, alongside Professor X, have the ability to resurrect dead mutants. And there's been one that's been dead for a long time. Never, never saw the light of day for, um, for nearly 47 years, and he's finally back. And I'm talking about the John Proud Star Thunderbird, the original Thunderbird that made his debut in John Size X-Men number one in 1975, only to die in that very issue. Now, this was a, a huge turning point with with the X-Men because this was the, the first time that they had seen the light of day in half a decade. In 1970, they were, um, due to poor sales, Marvel discontinued the X-Men franchise, but then uh, Chris Claremont and uh, John Byrne and, uh, and the late great Dave Cockrum came and um, um, reinvigorated the, the franchise, and it's been flying high ever since. But um, John Prostar uh, made his debut, uh, again, made his debut in that issue, and he died, and he never saw a light of day. But at the very end of... Uh, X-Men The Trial of Magneto number five, which happens to be one of the comics that, um, that I'm about to fe feature in the next segment, he comes back. And I can't wait to find, it, and I can't wait to see him come back. And then also, that's not all. He's gonna have his own one shot coming in, um, coming uh, sometime this year, I think in April called John Size X-Men Thunderbird. It's going to be written by Nala Rose and Steve Orlando. Now, if not, if the name Nala Rose um, sounds familiar to y'all, she is a wrestler in All Elite Wrestling, AEW. She's co-writing this with, alongside Steve Orlando. Now, Steve Orlando has written um, various DC uh, projects. One of them was Supergirl at one point. And, and it's going to be featured with art by uh, First Nations artist David Cutler. Now, um, really looking forward to this. I mean, John Proudstar, um, you know, I, I knew, I was just hoping that he was, I knew he was going to get um, resurrected because when they, when it was revealed that the five, which by the way consists of Elixir, Tempest, Hope, Proteus, and Egg, or the, the mutant formerly known as Gold Balls, uh, uh, with the, uh, under the tutelage of Professor X, that it was that they could resurrect dead mutants. I only knew it was only a matter of time before they decided to resurrect John Proudstar, and it's finally happened. And I can't wait to read um, X Men: The Trial of Magneto number five, and in a few months, John Size X Men: Thunderbird. I'm all in on that book, and I think this is great. Um, of course, he has a brother named Jay, James Proudstar, who's going by the code name Warpath, and he's been a member of the New Mutants and. He's been a member of the X-Men, um, the New Mutants, and X-Force, and I can't wait for them to finally reunite. Boy, um, and I have some more news that I'm going to, to cover with, um, with X-Men on next week's episode, so stay tuned for that. All right, that's it for Comically Speaking. Now let's get to the comics I bought this week. Comic books I bought this week. Alright, first up is Action Comics number 1038. 
The Amazing Spider-Man number 82. The Amazing Spider-Man number 83. Aquaman The Becoming number 4. Avengers number 51. Really excited about this book. Avengers Forever number 1. Black Panther number 2. Catwoman number 38. Detective Comics number 1046. The Flash number 777. Justice League number 70. Justice League incarnate number two. Radiant Black number 11. Robin number 9. Robins <laughs> number 2. Static Season 1, Number 4. Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, Number 6. Sword number 11. Teen Titans Academy number 10. Venom number 3. Wolverine number 19. And finally, and this is the book I was just talking about in the Comically Speaking segment, X-Men The Troll of Magneto, number five. All right, that's 23 which brings the total number of comics that I bought since December of 1997 to 11,113.
right, well, I hope y'all enjoyed this first episode of 2022. And here's the question again for a free tea for next week's episode of the show. Who played the role of the thinker in the Suicide Squad? And here's the only hint I'm going to give again. This actor is famous for playing the 12th Doctor on Doctor Who. Everyone who answers correctly will be entered in a drawing for a free tea on next week's episode of the show. And congratulations to Anonymous Gamer who won a free tea on this week's episode. All right, now here's the run head for the show. Now, on next week's episode, I am going to show some love to whoever wins the national championship game in college football. And that's either going to be Alabama or Georgia. I'm going to either, I'm going to wear either an Alabama or Georgia uh, comic hero tee, and I'm also going to have either an Alabama or Georgia pop vinyl here on the desk with me. So um, I'm going to watch the national championship game on Monday, and uh, um, may the may the best school win. And again, I also want to apologize for um, while I'm thinking about it for not doing my my uh, year end college football. Um, playoff episode of the, of the show um, ran into a ran into something that I thought was a, a lot more important than, than doing the show but uh, there's there's really nothing to worry about everything's fine now and I knew it was going to be fine but I knew that it, it also was going to prevent me from doing the show but um, it, it here, but I just want to say this sometimes you know life happens and you know things happen in life and it's not that it's it's not how we um, it's not so much that it happens. It only it, hap it only matters how we respond to it, and um, and I and you know I'm okay with it, and I hope that at the end at the end of this year, I'll do an, um, a college football playoff episode of the show, and um, yeah, all right. That's episode three eighty three. Now three eighty four. I'm going to raise awareness of cervical cancer. Now, cervical cancer is a very rare cancer among women, but I personally know some women that um, that have beaten it, and and this episode is for them and those who are no longer with us, and the families of those who are no longer with us as well. And then on episode 385, I'm going to raise awareness of a cause that I've never raised awareness of, and when I found out there was a um, when I found out about it, I knew that I had to do it. I'm going to raise awareness of birth defects. This month is Birth Defects Awareness and Prevention Month, and I am going and I'm going to raise awareness of, of that also. I mean, I personally know some folks that have been born with birth defects. I know some folks that have that who that that have lost their that have lost their lives due due to complications from their birth defects. And this episode is for for them and also their families. Um, I just want to go ahead and say this. Don't try to come into this new year the way that you left 20. Don't try to come into 2022 the way you left 2021. If there's something about yourself that that needs to that needs to change, go ahead and do it. Be the change. And if there's someone bothering you, then maybe there are things about yourself that you need to change because you cannot change other people. You can only change yourself, period. And also I wanna make a toast to 2022. May this be the year that we overcome any and all adversities we may face. And also, and not only that, but also a successful year to each and every one of us. Cheers. Ugh, not to worry. It's sparkling ice. <laughs> but, um, I mean, first, you know, I, I just want to thank each and every one of y'all for, um, for sticking with me all these years. And I know that this year, in terms of the show, in terms of me, in terms of each and every one of y'all, the best is always yet to come. All right, I'm Victor Nolly on a comic here. I'll see you next week for episode 383. So until then, be safe, be blessed, be a hero, and happy new year, y'all.